Back now with the Fox News alert. Hezbollah threatening to attack Israel after the IDF took out a car full of suspected Hezbollah terrorists. The terrorist group claims innocent civilians died in the strike. I'm sure the New York Times is going to report that. Alex Hogan is live in southern Israel with exactly what's happening on the ground right now. Alex. We are seeing significant strikes in Gaza. It is now day 31 of the war. You can probably hear some of the artillery behind me. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken continuing his trip around the Middle East. He met with the Prime Minister of Iraq, pushing once again for that humanitarian pause. This can be something that, that advances the prospect of getting the hostages back. It can also advance other things that we're committed to doing. Israeli forces have continued to push further into northern Gaza, now reaching all the way as far as the Mediterranean Sea. So far, they say they have targeted 2,500 Hamas targets since the ground incursion began. They're also encouraging anyone in northern Gaza, any civilian who might still be there, to leave and head south, releasing as many as one million pamphlets across uh, across northern Gaza. And in the south, in the southern part of Gaza, that is where we're hearing from the White House that as many as 300 American citizens have been able to leave. We know, according to the State Department, that as many as 400 Americans who are in Gaza are hoping to get out. And new just in the last several hours, we're learning more about the growing tensions in the northern part of the country. That is where uh, Hezbollah says it unleashed grad rockets. Those are, again, wide spraying rockets. Uh, there's no specific territory of exactly where they would land. So a very, a very dangerous rocket to try to launch. But that was launched after Lebanese authorities say that an Israeli strike hit a car carrying three daughters and a grandmother. Back to you. Alex, thanks so much. Great reporting. Stay safe. Now let's go to Joey, who has a closer look at Israel's ground offensive. Joey, and the touch screen. Yeah, the, the, the uh, infamous touch screen at this point. I've learned how to use it, thankfully. I want to show you guys some. So this is the Gaza Strip in Israel. And as you see here, I just want to point out a few things. First, you can see these black lines coming down at a diagonal, and they kind of create a line here across the center of Gaza. This is your evacuation zone. This is where they're telling everyone to get out of. And why is that? That's because Gaza City is right in the middle here. So this is Gaza City. This gray area here are the more densely populated areas. And what I really want to hone in on here, guys, and show you is this about three to four mile parcel of land right here from the border coming in. And this is a, a push that the Israeli forces, the IDF, is doing what we call a, a slow, methodical clear. The reason why this is so important, if you look here, they're getting into the more densely populated area, but they're still clicks miles away from what is Gaza City. Now, another important part of this map, I want to show you this town here, uh, Jabalia. And I want to give you some information before we get started here. So what we've learned is that Israel took an intelligence post Hamas intelligence post in Jabalia and learned from that intelligence what they believe to be true is that, is that Hamas has decided to retreat from the outskirts, from the outer area of northern Gaza into the city to mount their defensive. And uh, I'll show you why that's so important as we go through these slides. Give me just a second here to go through the next slide. So as you saw that sliver of land in the northwest corner there, this is, the, this is a zoom in of the, of the upper third of that piece of land there in the northwest corner of Gaza. And what you see here with all of these blue lines, here let me use red, with all these blue lines coming down, this is troop and tank movement. Most of these blue lines are on roads. And just take a look here, guys. You see this is mostly farmland. And what we can show you here, I'll do it in, in blue with these circles, these are craters that are visible from satellite imaging of probably some sort of artillery. It would call it an indirect fire. It's lobbed over. And you can see these craters all over this first third here. And then you see the movements of the tanks, Israeli troops going through mostly farmland, probably taking out where manned units were shooting rockets or mortars. As we, as we keep going into the second third of this strip, now you start to see a couple of other things that are really important. I'll use two different colors here. So first, I want to use red to show you where some of these craters are. Uh, there's a big part of a town here that's absolutely decimated. And then in blue, I want to show you what's really important. These are military vehicles. So this is how far they've made it. So they've made it on into, and as you can see, it's starting to get much more rural. And I want to go on to the next one here, because here's where you see they're getting into really dense populated areas. And in this, in this you can see, I'll use red again, this is craters where there used to be houses. 
craters where there used to be houses. And so what you're seeing here is, the, is they're getting closer to the densely populated area, which essentially means they're getting closer to where Hamas is going to mount their defensive. They're not trying to defend farmland. They're trying to defend big municipality, big, big um, densely populated area, because that's where they have a strategic advantage. All right, so Joey, based on the experience that you had uh, fighting in the Marine Corps, how do you fight terrorists who embed themselves in these densely populated civilian areas? How, how do you draw them out? Yeah, so another part of intelligence that we've, that we've seen reported is that Hamas is using IEDs. And so IEDs are great because they lay in wait. These are basically mines of different types. They can be up in a wall or they can be in the ground. You don't have to be there. You set them up, you put a battery on them, and then you can be miles away. As Israel is coming in, they're having to sweep these streets, sweep these alleys. Anywhere they're on foot, anywhere they have a vehicle, they're having to sweep them slowly and methodically. And they've even put out images showing that's exactly what they're doing. That's what makes it take days and weeks instead of hours to go a mile. And so the IED component, the landmines, the different types of lay in wait munitions that they have, some supplied by other countries as, as actual conventional ordnance, others homemade but very sophisticatedly made IEDs, that's your biggest threat. Once you get into the actual urban environment where you have 3D structures, now you've got snipers, now you've got rocket positions, you've got more direct fire, but direct fire that can take out a tank, RPGs, things like that. Mm. All right, Joey. Great work. Can't wait to have you back here at the desk. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.